Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now usually when I test out a piece of hardware it stays in my system for a couple of days tops so that I can get a good feel for the product as well as make a review in a limited amount of time. Occasionally though something may stay in my PC longer as part of a My Week With video, a little series I started a while back about spending a week with certain components as if they were my own personal parts before telling you how I get on with them. This time it's the turn of the HD 6450, one of AMD these cheapest graphics cards that can still be bought new. This one is the Sapphire Flex version and features 1GB of DDR3 memory, 160 stream processors and support for DirectX 11. AMD also recommend a 400 watt power supply, though it has no additional 6 pin power connectors so will probably run on a lot less just fine. So let me kick off by saying my time with this card wasn't brilliant. Intended as a video adapter for systems without onboard graphics, the 6450 does the job just fine in that regard. I installed it, jumped into device manager to install basic drivers and used AMD's auto detect feature to find the latest drivers for this card. A perfectly simple operation and one that let me begin using it. The passive cooling solution means that the card is always completely silent and runs idle at about 44 degrees, jumping to a recorded maximum of 60 when gaming. If you have an older system without an onboard GPU or want something that allows you to run a dual monitor setup, then this would be an ideal solution, especially given the sub £40 or $40 price tag. If you look at Amazon reviews for the 6450, you'll see that gaming based write ups are few and far between but the card is generally well praised because it has helped out so many people who thought that their system was on its last legs by helping with things like stuttery video playback issues and providing users with extra output connections. My usual week also consists of a lot of editing and because this process is largely CPU based, programs like Premiere Pro 2015 still ran fine even if I did have to lower the preview playback to quarter resolution. The 6450 shared the week with the Ryzen 3 1200 at stock speeds. So far I can recommend this card for users with slow or non-existent integrated graphics who just want to be able to watch YouTube videos, Netflix or any other streaming services. But to all you gamers out there, what does the 6450 have in store for you? Is this cheap card a hidden pearl in a sea of low end components or will you regret every minute of your purchase? That of course depends on what you want to play. My usual games collection went out the window this week and I found myself having to stick to older or less demanding titles but even then I wasn't really granted with a very good experience. You should be able to get away with playing fairly old games smoothly but even dated AAA offerings will struggle when the 6450 is at the centre of your system. All of my gaming tests this week were conducted at 720p and the results on screen are figures from a combined average of two half hour gaming sessions with each game over the course of the past 7 days. 1080p unfortunately wasn't an option. Overall, the HD6450 isn't really a great choice for gaming and something like Nvidia's GT710 would handle that better at a similar new price. In fact, the 710 would actually make for the better overall all-rounder as it's ideal for the same sort of things. My week with this graphics card has been a memorably bad one as a gamer, but a pleasant one as an everyday user when all I wanted to do was general internet stuff. It's important to remember that the HD6450 is weaker than a lot of modern integrated graphics. If you need a super cheap card for whatever reason, then I'd actually suggest the GT710 over this or the GT1030 if you have a little more money to spend, which is a pretty good gaming card for its super low price. Nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed what I had to say about my week with one of AMD's cheapest graphics cards on the market and even though it's obvious that you do get much better value for money when shopping used, I thought it would be interesting to take a look at what you can expect from some of the cheapest low end but new offerings that are available to you. So as always, thank you for watching. I am sorry for the lack of videos recently but all will be explained very very soon if you enjoyed this leave a like on it if you didn't leave a dislike subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully i'll see all of you in the next one